okay hello so today I will show you what is the MPPT PV MPPT boost battery calculator so you can download it here so you just double click it is a standalone software only 2 megabyte or 3 megabyte okay so you have to open it okay okay and the software will run okay you no need to install it okay it's just directly run okay so this is a typical uh, a typical system okay so you have a pv here connected to the boost converter okay okay boost converter that is operate with the mppt okay so you can see here you have c l c c in c out l and l out okay so this component actually uh, you need it okay inside the boost converter but usually in the current state you don't have the calculation for this one okay the c in the l the l c out and l out so basically when you design this you are just using try and error but uh, i managed to determine the formula on how to design this properly so based on the formula i create a I create a, I create a calculator that is easy to be used. Okay, you can see here, you just insert the value. Okay, and then you can know what is the battery. Okay, the battery limit and as well as the inductor. Okay, all these parameter. So basically, uh, this paper is still uh, under review. Okay, so this is the objective to maintain continuous current mode operation throughout the. L so L will be continuous current mode maintain ripple factor within the specification redesign so you want to control the ripple factor here the uh, voltage ripple factor here and the ripple factor here the current ripple factor so the current will not be more than your limit okay so that is important okay for this one current actually it's try to if you don't properly design this your battery can damage because the current ch keep changing and for PV you cannot achieve maximum power okay you cannot extract maximum power because if the ripple voltage is very high you cannot operate at the maximum power point okay that's why you have to do this okay and also maintain duty cycle within the desired limit so duty cycle is only 0 to 1 but in reality boost converter cannot operate 0 to 1 it's only 0 to around 0 to 8 okay if you go more than that it will fail to operate so basically your MPPT will not properly work so that's why you have to design this properly so tutorial video ah uh, okay so click here to go to the tutor this tutorial video so no need to look about it okay ah uh, so right now here is the setting so design specification and this is the calculation so the first one you have to insert the MPPT okay maximum power point so for PV you have maximum power point during the G minimum and G maximum so you have to know okay during the G minimum what is the voltage and current maximum power voltage and maximum power current so this one you have to either simulate or just Okay, uh, data sheet usually for GMAX you just set it as STC standard test condition from the data sheet. But for this one, you have to either you have to model it or you have to adjust it. Okay, using model. Okay, so this is how you, you have to set first the PV module and then you have the boost converter characteristic. You have to know what is the switching frequency you want to use. This is in kilohertz, be careful, and then the duty cycle minimum duty cycle maximum so you have to put the minimum and maximum of course as i mentioned before you cannot make it more than 0 0.8 and 0. Point, yeah 0 0.8 if more than 0 0.8 this boost converter uh, this mppt converter cannot operate okay and then you have a ripple factor okay maximum power point ripple factor which is this voltage here the ripple factor of the voltage so they have to make it small so I suggest 1% okay? and the uh, output voltage ripple this one here 
so I suggest also also 1% and the current ripple which is the current that goes into the battery you have to control it to ensure that it is not damaging the battery so 0 0.01 which is 1% and then you have a safety factor of course when you do this one calculation is in uh, linear mode okay in the but in reality it is non-linear so you have to put the this one the safety factor for inductor i suggest only 1.3 is enough but for capacitor i suggest much more larger because the non ability will affect the uh, the system okay and the inductance output inductance lo okay also i suggest 1.7 is enough so this one no need to change too much this one no need to change too much except the frequency okay i suggest you change the frequency and PV parameter depending on your PV. So after you insert every value, just press calculate the PV. Eh, calculate the battery voltage. Okay, what battery you use? So basically you have a range. Okay, you see here it given a range. So basically you cannot go less or more than this. So for example, for this case, for this design, you have to use uh, usually for this case 72 voltage okay the voltage has limit eh? uh, it has 12 volt 24 system okay depend on the battery PC bus 48 72 and so on okay so after you set the voltage okay you can calculate the component so basically all of this component is now calculated so it can operate in continuous current mode and the voltage ripple is within this limit so the duty cycle range you can see here this is within the range 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 so the operation will be around this area and the center this one usually for mppt some mppt needs to have initial duty cycle so you can use this one okay that's it this is the calculator this is the product so basically this is the standard Okay, not a standard, but actually commonly used for MPPT. Okay, this design. Okay, usually in research, we use a load here, a resistive load. But for real life application, we use to connect the battery. Okay, so this one is very useful. Okay, so why we want to do this? Because we, have, we want to make this as small as possible. Okay, the smaller it is, the more perform the higher the performance it is transient performance is much more better that's why we need to have this okay so good luck with your design and thank you